What is up everybody? Welcome back to Pinoy Balance and we're going straight to our Top Shot talk. And our guest for today is one of my homeboys that I met through Twitter. He goes by the name of Pack Drip, all the way from Massachusetts. How you doing, bro? I'm doing great. Can't complain. Awesome. Thanks for coming through and thanks for uh, taking your time to come through and share your Top Shot story. So for all the people out there, tell us a little bit about how you discovered Top Shot or who, who introduced it to you. All right. So uh, I have a stock chat with a couple of friends and I was trying to get them into stocks. And one of them, uh, my friend Tyler Brady, was telling me, yo, you're in the basketball. Like, you're going to love this. And he kept showing me. He sent me this link about NBA Top Shot. And when I went on in January, I tried to log in and make an account and they wouldn't let me for a couple of weeks. Every single time he would text me and be like, have you made a Top Shot account yet? I said, no, I, I, I keep trying. The site's down. The site's down. I finally got in and there were packs available, I believe, on the marketplace at this time, but I didn't even think to buy any. And I kind of sat on the account for like two weeks. I didn't buy a thing. And then one day, okay. someone else in the group chat bought something. And yeah. I, honestly, it was FOMO out of my friend. And it was like, you know what? I'll do it with you. Like, I'll join. And I think I bought a Chris Middleton s1 three-pointer and it was from the i believe from the the playoffs it was against the yeah. and then how did it go from there from like there, like it just became every single day of me just checking top shot checking what's going on with the marketplace getting into the discord talking with people and eventually i even uh i was following so much of these like early top shot influencers and some of them weren't speaking my like basketball fandom language, if you know what I'm saying. And I think a lot yeah. of these people have gotten weeded out. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like it was it was the early guys who were posing or, or girls and guys who were posing as more top shot NBA freaks. And it turns out in these next recent months that we all know they're they're more of NFT pump and dumpers. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the voices in the space kind of almost inspired me to make my own. Uh, yeah. make my own page in pack drip uh, the first person who kind of like talked to me about it because I would always talk to minted moments on Instagram he's got like 5,000 followers he's one of the OGs he was in in August and uh, I believe his name's Kyle mm -hmm. and I would talk with him and I would try to talk to other people but they weren't really like talking basketball or really like I don't know they, they seemed so weird and, and disengaged whenever the conversation became basketball whenever I would have a question or how do you like this? Or what are you thinking about this? Um, but he was like, you know what? You should make a, you should make a page. He goes, these people aren't talking basketball like that. Like I think it would blow up once top shot really is seen by the average NBA fan and everything. I think, you know, you should get in this early. And what felt like it was very late to me because the floor already went through the roof, <laughs> honestly. Um, and, and I thought like I was so late to a space and I was like, you know what, I'll try. It. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I, I joined at, uh, well, at least making content, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, just, I was, I was so addicted. I wanted to talk to everybody in the community. I, I was so excited about this. I, I hate addicted probably is a bad word, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I was so excited and trying to talk to people and it was, it was funny. So it was just YouTubers just making charts and graphs, you know, yeah. they made it strictly like a stock thing. And it was yeah. eaten up that they, they were talking stocks and all these numbers and stuff, but okay. Yeah. This yeah. moment trended and went up $80 and stuff, but it, it was somebody that wasn't really a, a, an NBA player that you would expect to do yeah. that. Me yeah. knowing the NBA, I'm like, why is this guy, why did he go up a hundred dollars in a day? It doesn't, it yeah. doesn't make sense to me but these guys are telling you to buy him because he's going to go up a hundred dollars again tomorrow it's true it's true um how was um your pack experience what was the first pack you ever opened what did you have what was your pull or what was your best pull you ever did in in, in some of the packs that you've gotten so and I a quick rundown of a couple packs but i i don't remember my first exact pack maybe i can yeah. look back the live token but i remember when i i'm a huge ball family fan yeah it's not just did you used to watch their show Ball in the Family? Is that like baller. I own Big Baller brand clothing? Oh my god! It's probably like, the it's, first. I'm, you're the first I'm, person I've met that has. <laughs> dead serious. I own shirts. I own hoodies. I got a hat. Like I've I've been buying and, and supporting like Lonzo, all, like all the way back to when they were all in high school is when I found out about them. 
I found yeah. out about Lonzo when he was get averaging a triple double in high school his senior year. Yeah. That was the first year, and I was like, all three brothers are playing together. Like, I wish me and my brothers can play together, like all yeah. on one team or something. So it was always like a cool thing to root for, and they just kept getting this momentum and, and kept getting hate. And I'm and I almost made it made me love them more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was something about being like a family business. Their dad, I mean, he's like he's very you know boisterous and loud and and, and has a big personality. And I think that that more intimidated people because he was he was confident in his kids. Not a yeah. lot of people talk so highly, you know. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you on that. So, which one did you pull? Your very first best pull was it Alonzo oh, or Lamelo? <laughs> I opened my Rising Stars pack. Oh Lamello. no way! Oh. Bro, no number, way. Four, number 426, and I yeah. was screwed. I honestly, like, my neighbors probably should have called the cops with how loud <laughs> I was. And this is before, this is the crazy part this is before I even was making content, so I didn't yeah. record it. Yeah. And after the fact, I'm thinking, like, weeks later, you know, now I'm, I was trying to get in the content mode, and I'm like, wow, I really opened the mellow ball. And this was a $5,000 card at the time. Then you had the Rising Stars Challenge with Anthony Edwards and everything, and I didn't sell yeah. I didn't take the five G's. I yeah. spent another five G's to complete the challenge <laughs> at Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Like a solo. My, 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 my take is, and like the real basketball fans in us, like we're the ones that like, hey, we buy moments we like or we do challenges that we like, and but we do it for the sake of like, we want to have that moment, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I think I, we all can relate. Like I, the last, uh, the very first challenge I did was the Seeing Stars. And uh, oh. I got wrecked on that, but I never sell. Like I never sold my LeBron. Like I, I. <laughs> one of the seeing stars is in my Lamelo pack. I because oh, you know you get a seeing stars moment in the Lamelo. I mean, yeah, in exactly. The stars. So I yeah. pulled a Lamelo ball five Gs. Then yeah. I pulled Luca seeing stars, which was a thousand at the no time. No way. But you you don't understand. Like since That's, I thought, yeah, like. I thought I had six thousand dollars worth of moments for basically yeah. the cost of the pack. So yeah. in my head, I have like six thousand of wiggle room. So yeah. I'm thinking in my head, like even if I spend this money, like I could get the money back. Like it's still doubled, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was kind of, it, it was definitely short sighted. I'll tell you that because yeah. I didn't understand the market dynamics and how circulated these moments weren't. Yeah. Because there was a very select account very few select accounts that actually had these yeah. um yeah i think so, it was more so on us like hey like w when when you're a basketball fan like you, you you know the emotion gets in you and the fandom gets in you more than literally the money but then yeah. we didn't realize that we're also playing with we're also playing with people pull me away from my lamello ball moment yeah like we're also playing with 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 people that knows how to deal with supply and demand and knows like that knows how to play with crypto um, investing, so they treated it like a crypto investment, and it was very volatile. And we didn't really we saw it was like, hey, like this is a like, people would want this moment. Or anything was behind it. Like I didn't know about yeah. Flow blockchain. I didn't know what an NFT was at all. Like yeah. I'm in here strictly off basketball and basketball only. Exactly. And, and, yeah. Like I. No, and, and my I, take on this is that it it did you know as much as the volatility, it did two things. It converted um, crypto or NFT investors into uh, b becoming a basketball fan. And also, it helped a lot of basketball fans learn more about crypto and investing. Because I, I was the opposite. I, I was a basketball fan already, and it helped me kind of draw it into open myself into the NFT space. And I was already a basketball fan, but I learned how crypto work. And then literally, you know, not only was I look, looking into Top Shot, but I was, you know, dipping my head into different NFT projects, right? So that's kind of what it did to me, right? NFT, <laughs> what was your first? I, I have yet to jump in an NFT project other than Top it's, Shot. It's a lot difficult, man. It's a lot. There is so much more, you know, it's this is a lot looking into supply and demand. And honestly, what, it's, what, you know. What NFT project did you did you get into? Are you in like, um, I, I have some, good? like, you know, like I had some World of Women, which I think went off, went through the roof. So I held a couple of those and then, some fudgy penguins. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah. Yeah. so right oh, now the they're going crazy. Yeah. But like my take is like, you know, like in these things, you always want to make sure you take profit, right? So that's one thing that probably I learned in Top Shot now that I'm going to apply into Top Shot. If there's certain things that goes through the roof. Sometimes you just have to, hey, you can always buy it back. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I, I hear that. Because if I would have sold my Lamello and just 
held the five G's, I could have five Lamellos. Right we now. could have, yeah. Honestly, you know, like I bought a Luca SS. That's how crazy <laughs> to do the SS yeah, Seeing yeah. Star. <laughs> like Rising Stars Lamello was part of Challenge One because it's Rising yeah. Stars one, Two. The second one was for Zion. Well, yeah. with Seeing Stars, it was Kevin Durant was the first in one. The in first the first one. Second. So I'm like, yeah. yo, I'm holding Luca no matter what. Like it's gonna yeah. pump crazy. It's gonna yeah. go up. Once I figured out the market dynamics and what happened to my rising stars, I kind of yeah. planned for stars. And I was like, okay, with this same logic, I have the basically Lamello of the rising stars. I have the Luca of seeing stars. So, yeah. so like this, this is gonna do good. By the time the LeBron challenge rolls around, everybody kind of got burned and it started yeah. like the market then took yeah. its toll on everybody. Exactly. And it yeah. went from an eight hundred dollar moment pre challenge to now this is going like five hundred, four hundred during the challenge. So yeah. I jumped off them both, listed them both for like four hundred, and got eight hundred for them both. And yeah. that was honestly like my only success story. I've read everything <laughs> else. <on the> ground. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. Like, uh, I wanted to talk more, but uh, we ran out of the first segment. But we still have a part two, so I hope you guys enjoy this story of a pack drip on how he came about with Top Shot. But stay tuned, guys, because when we come back, we're going to look into his favorite collection that he created a showcase for us. And we're going to walk through why he collected these moments and why he did certain challenges that now he has the reward for. So I hope you guys stay in tune, and we're going to have some more Top Shot talk. The Top Shot boy here, Marky Mark. So stay tuned.